All right, Kell Brook, Earl Spence, here we go. Okay, shout out to whoever. Look, somebody just left a uh, comment on another video. They're like, look, man, you need to get this prediction right because, uh, you know, your last two were wrong. <laughs> so, look, let me defend that real quick because that kind of hurt my ego, okay? Uh, Canelo Chavez, look. I said Canelo was going to win. I said, you can go back and listen to all my predictions. I was like, I know Canelo's going to win, but I'm going to go with Chavez. I mean, it was basically like that, okay? Now, go back to the beginning of the channel. I've made like 10, about 10 predictions so far, and I've gotten 8 out of 10 right. And then, uh, let's see. Oh, Anthony Joshua Klitschko. I had Anthony Joshua winning. And you know what? Or I'm sorry, I had Klitschko winning. I take that. I had, well, originally I had Anthony Joshua winning. Then I come back and change my mind. I said, you know what? I I, I think uh, Klitschko is going to take it. And I was I was damn near right. I was damn near right. Okay. I mean, that was a uh, that was a pick 'em fight. Okay. And I think if it wouldn't have gotten stopped in the 11th round, okay, if if they would have went to that championship round, 12th round. You know, a controversial stop by the judge. You know, you never know what would happen. Both guys were gassed, tired. Uh, you know, any, anything could have happened in round 12. And uh, even another channel, I'm not going to mention them, but they said, you know, we were robbed of a historical 12th round heavyweight, uh, you know, round, basically, that it could have been a historical thing. So, uh, you know, so, yeah, my predictions are pretty much dead on, buddy. But, uh, no, anyway, thank, thanks for leaving the comment. I, I It motivated me to, to get this one right, okay? Now, like I said, you guys never know what I'm thinking. You know, I've been kind of playing up Spence the last few days, and, uh, you know, uh, in my mind, I think I've given him every edge that I possibly can, and maybe there is a little bit of favoritism because he trains right here in my hometown, my backyard, so maybe there's there's a touch of favoritism, and uh, he trains with the Charlo brothers, and, you know, I can, I'm can i getting to know those guys, and eventually, look, eventually, you know, me and the Charlo brothers, we're, we're going to be like two peas in a pod, I'm telling you, because uh, I got a plan, you know, I got a plan, and uh it involves them, and, and they're a part of my plan because I, I think they're going to be at the top of their division uh, eventually, especially in the 154-pound division and the middleweight division after uh, the, Gennady, the Gennady Golovkin reign is over. So, But anyway, let's get into it. Uh, all right, look, Kell Brook, Earl Spence, here is my official prediction, okay? Um, okay, look. Let's let's go back to the beginning. I'll make it quick. This will be under 10 minutes, I promise. Well, I don't promise. I'll try to keep it under 10 minutes. Go back to the beginning. You know, Brooks struggled with, with the decision. Does he go to 154, you know, possibly middleweight, right? Or does he melt back down to 147 and defend that IBF? Now, I didn't like that. I never like when any boxer melts down. I, I just don't like it. It's a red flag immediately, and you you almost have to change your whole thought process uh, when 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 you're trying to predict the fight when they're melting down because they're not they're not who who you know who you're accustomed to them being. Okay, they're not who you think they are when they're melted down. Um, but you know, I, I'm making my prediction. Even a melted down Brook, okay, I think is game for a green Spence, okay, so if it was a different opponent, maybe, you know, someone who was uh, somewhat of a veteran at, at welterweight, then I probably wouldn't, you know, favor Brooke as, as much as I am here, so, you know, so that's kind of the reason I'm giving him a pass on this whole melting down thing, because it's it Spence, okay, you know, it's a, a very green welterweight, now you look, you look at, you look at Spence, okay, um, and and you know what? Wait, let me back up. Let me back up. <clears throat> Brooke had a decision. I mean, what's he gonna do? Go to 154 pound uh, division and fight who? Charlo, Irizarry, Lara, Andre. I mean, you know, maybe a Miguel Cotto. Like, what's he gonna do at 154? So really, you know, I was thinking about it, and I was like, well, I guess his only option was to go and you know defend the IBF, right? I mean. Because I, I don't know. I don't see him beating Charlo. I don't see him jumping up to, to, to light middleweight and beating Charlo, beating Lara, you know, a, techno, a highly technical fighter. You know, Charlo, just guy that hits like a truck, you know, uh, almost reminds me of a Golovkin. 
or an Andre, you know. So I thought, you know, maybe he'll get Miguel Cotto in there and look good. But then, you know, who who's going to want to see that, right? Who's going to want to see that? Because Brooke needs a good comeback fight after the Gennady Golovkin fight. And then you got Earl Spence, okay? Chris Algieri, I mean, you know, a lot of a lot of people are saying, you know, you know, he beat a chef. What's the big deal? Like this kid beat a beat a chef. You know, he he beat a nutritionalist, right? Okay, Leonard Bondu. Okay, that's his resume. You know, a, a, a sparring session with with Mayweather. Okay, so you know, I, I'm putting a lot of thought into this here. Okay, um, and look, I think Brooke has the tools that he needs to beat to beat Spence and to where I think Spence is, you know, a great, I mean, he's a great upcoming talent. He really is. So I don't want to take anything away from him, but what I like about Brooke, he's always balanced. Okay. He gets himself into, into position to throw punches. That's what I like about Brooke. I mean, because look, I'm in the gym often and I, and I watch these guys and I, and, and you can see there's this, there's a, there's a professional level and then there's like a gym level, right? I mean, it's like artwork versus like a little kid coloring. I mean, that's the best comparison I can give you. And Brooke, it's like, it's artwork. It's kind of like a Lomachenko. Okay. I mean, he, when he can get himself into position to throw punches and I like that. And, uh, and it's something that I've always noticed and, uh, you know, I've, I've always liked about him, you know, um, <clears throat> I mean, he's got, the, I think, and, and just the, the, the ring knowledge, the ring generalship, whatever you want to call it, you know, he, he's, he's, he's the veteran. Okay. So I, I got to give him that. Right. So, and these are all the things that I like to touch on. Okay. I think he can find the range. Once he finds his range, I think he can keep the range. And again, very important. You know, what you got to find that range. You have to adjust your range and it can be inches. Okay. You, and you got to, where, where your footwork is, where your lead foot is, you know, you've got to find the range. And I think Brooke is a master at finding the range. I really do. And combinations. I mean, come on. We all know Brooke throws great combinations. I mean, think about that uppercut to Genn uh, Gennady Golovkin, you know, uh, go, I mean, go back and watch any of his fights. I mean, great combination puncher. And I like that. And he lets his damn hands go. I mean, that's like one of the biggest things in my book. He's not afraid to let his hands go. He's got balls, you know, and, and I like that too, you know, that, uh, you, you can see at, at a point in the fight, it's not reckless, but at a point, you know, he'll just walk up and just throw like, you know, a, a, a two and a three and a four, uh, you know, a four punch combination. And I like that. So that, and I like that he can keep busy and, and I'll tell you why that's, that's going to be important here in a minute. So, uh, you know, uh, you know what, I'll, you know, I'll tell you now, I'll tell you now. This fight is going to be in Brooks' backyard, okay? Now, if Brooke can just win like 40% of every round, these judges are going to give him that round. If there's any swing rounds, it's going to Brooke, okay? Think about it. They're in Sheffield in front of, you know, tens of thousands of people. The, the judge is probably like his uncle's neighbor or some shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's no way these judges are going to, you know, oh, well, that was a valiant effort from Spence, and we're going to go ahead and give him that round. Okay, good job, young man. Hell no. They're going to give Brooke every round they can give him. Okay, so like I said, if Brooke can win 40, about 40% of every round then then he's got it in the bag on a, on on a, on a decision so you know that's another thing i thought about too i mean he doesn't need to go out there and win win big rounds and if he does i mean if he goes out there and hurts him wobbles him or just dominates him whatever it may be then you know, I mean it's going to take spence like two rounds to recover like spence would need to come out and have two really good rounds to make up for one really good round from Brooke. Okay, so you got to look at it like this because look, you know they even even a lot of you out there you might say there's going to be no favoritism because you know this judge is this guy and this judge is that guy because I don't know who the judges are but I'm telling you it doesn't matter. When you got the crowd cheering and screaming at everything Brooke does. I mean Brooke can flick a jab and that place is going to ignite and that does influence the judges. I mean it, it does. So um, uh, and you know, and I always say that they need to establish the jab and, uh, you know, and, and I think Brooke, honestly, I think Brooke has one of the best jabs in the welterweight division. I really do. Uh, I think he's got just a clean, perfect, sharp, crisp, 
powerful jab, and I think if he can get that jab established, like we just talked about, along with the range, along with the combinations, uh, you know, along with you know, keep keeping balanced, okay, you know, keeping in position to throw them punches, throw them combinations, you know, pivot out, you know, head movement. Just he needs to put the whole package together, and I think he can because Brooke has you know all the fundamentals and more, you know. So I think he's going to put it together well against uh, Earl Spence. All right. Uh, and, and, and the jab, of course, the, the, uh, after the jab, rather the, the straight right hand. Okay. I mean, it sounds basic and fundamental, but against the South Paul, there you go. It's deadly, you know, so he needs to get that good jab, you know, flick it out there and boom, throw that right hand behind it each and not each and every time, but often. Okay. So, uh, you know, I, and I, like I said, I think he's going to put it all together. And, uh, you know, I think it's just going to be a good night for Brooke. I really do. You know, so now as far as uh, Spence goes, man, I mean, you know, I, and I kind of thought back. I kind of thought back. OK, you got a Southpaw against an Orthodox fighter. Right. So I kind of thought back to like a Pacquiao Cotto, you know, or something. I'm trying because I like to do that. I like to go back and think about a similar matchup, you know, because styles make fights. So, you know, and I thought, you know, that that left right down the middle, because, you know, if you if you imagine yourself in the Orthodox position, OK, when you throw your jab, you're basically and, and and typically you're gonna throw your jab, follow with the right. When you do that, that that left right down the middle is deadly. So I think look, you just remember me telling you, remember me telling you this because Spence is gonna catch him with that jab right down the pipe, or, or with the, the I'm sorry, with the left right down the pipe. Remember me telling you this. So I think that's gonna be like a big moment, you know, for Spence is that 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 uh that straight left. I really do. I think that straight left is going to. Uh, you know, going to catch Brooke a couple of times, but we, you know, I think he can handle it. Now, I know a lot of people are saying, you know, because he got his eye broke, you know, his orbital bone broke, you know, Spence is going to work that eye, maybe, possibly, but, you know, and here's the final thing that I want to end on, you know, look at the Sean Porter fight. Kel Brook is not afraid to hold, you know, so I think, you know, like I said, he's going to control the range because he does it well. He's going to control the range. First, he's going to find it, then control it, okay, and like I said, win 40% of every round, and he's got it in a bag okay but you know it, i think he needs to smother spence on the inside you know don't get all cocky and try to bang it out with him in the phone booth right you know get out of the pocket and i think he needs to do what he did and, and look i hate holding i fucking hate holding but at, he needs to hold okay don't i mean don't let spence get in there and work the body you know uppercuts hooks these little quick check hooks let you know just don't let them don't let them get comfortable you know, don't hook with a hooker. Don't don't do none of that shit. And you know, when, once he's inside that pocket, hold. Referee breaks it up. Find the range. Pop the jab. Throw the right. You know, win 40% of the round. You know, all the way to a uh, to a 12th round decision. And that's what I think we're gonna get here. I think I think Brooke by decision is what I'm gonna go with. Okay. So like I said, you <laughs> look. You guys never know what I'm thinking because a lot of you were like, "Oh, I don't understand why. Why are you picking Spence and why this?" I was like, "You don't. You don't know who I'm picking. What are you talking about?" You know. So you know. So I think a split or majority decision uh, for Brooke. I mean, all look. All he's got to do is survive 12 rounds. That's it. You know, make it through 12 rounds. You know, he's in his own backyard in Sheffield. Make it 12 rounds, win at least 40, 45 percent of every round. You know, and like I said, if Brooke has a good round, it's going to take uh, Spence like two rounds to recover. You know, in the judge's eyes. So there you go. That's what I think. I think uh, I've got Brooke by decision. Bam. Who do you have?